Hey, how are you? Hello. Yeah, it's so good to hear from you. Yes, wonderful to be with you. Where are you right now? Well, I'm here. Like, yeah, very funny show you. Like, like a Zen master, wherever you are, here you are. No, I'm here. Whoa. <laughs> He's actually here. Yes, so that's what I said. He's here. That's what I said. Wow. <laughs> Want to sit down? Yes. Uh, Shoryu, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, good to see you. Good to see you. I was expecting you here, so it's nice to have you. Nice to be here. Okay. So I have a question for you. So we all know that the climate catastrophe is coming. Well, I have to stop you right there. Okay, I'm stopped right now. <laughs> <laughs> this climate catastrophe is here. It's already happening. And if someone says it's coming, that's the delusion that allows it to continue. It has already arrived. People are dying. The environment is crumbling. And we have to deal with it immediately. So let's say I, I know. The climate catastrophe is already here, mm. right? My next question, why are we not doing anything about it? Mm. This is one of the most important questions of our age. And the place I want to begin is with the question. The important word there that is so often not defined is the word we. Who we? is that? We. Who exactly is we? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, this being who is we is a huge system. It's many people working together. Mm. And a lot of the time when people say, I can't do anything, they are saying, I don't have any access to this we who has to do something. I can't do it. We have to do it. And I'd like to suggest that each of us has the ability to contribute to the kind of we who can do something about this. So I'd like to answer the question, why aren't we doing anything since the climate catastrophe is here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'd suggest that this huge global system is a lot like an addict. Mm. And you have an addict who is creating a problem by doing the thing that they believe will solve the problem. They feel bad, so they drink. It seems to make them feel better, but actually it makes them feel even worse in the long run, mm -hmm. so they drink even more. We're in that same situation. How so? The easy answer, of course, is that we're addicted to fossil fuels. Mm. Right. And that's true. We are addicted to fossil fuels. Right. We yes, have I to drink a gallon a day. Exactly. No, that's kidding. Exactly. <laughs> Don't drink a gallon a day. <laughs> <laughs> well, we use up a lot more than a gallon a day. Mm, true. But more than that, we're addicted to misery. Really? Fascinating. We're addicted Say. to suffering. Mm, say more. We have created a situation in which exactly what we're holding on to is our suffering. We've made a, a huge system in which if people are lonely, if people are miserable, then they participate in that system all the more. We have stuff available for you to buy. If you weren't lonely, you wouldn't buy it. We mm. have algorithms that wish to trap your attention. Mm. If you weren't lonely, you wouldn't participate. And a lot of the time they say that the opposite mm. of addiction isn't sobriety. The opposite of addiction is connection. Mm. Fascinating. If you're connected with people, you overcome your addictions. Fascinating. And more and more we've worked out that if we can keep people <clears throat> alone, disconnected mm. by offering them a kind of a false connection through a screen, say, then they are all the easier to addict. Mm. And when they're addicted, they can be motivated to participate in a system. So then we ask, okay, so what can we do about that? What can we do about that? <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm a good student. You ask me to ask, I ask. <laughs> we find systems that function best when people are not lonely, but when people are connected. And we have those systems. We mm. know those systems. Mm. Those systems are spiritual communities. 
And a lot of the time nowadays we see the spiritual community as a competitor to this general mainstream. Mm. I certainly see it that way. I'm trying to offer an alternative to the mainstream. Mm. So that means that we bring people together mm -hmm. so that in connection they function better. When they feel compassion rather than craving, they mm. function better. When they have wisdom rather than delusion, they function better. When we look at our general society, we have craving mm -hmm. and we have delusion. We say, for example, there's no climate crisis. We say, maybe there is or not, but I want this stuff. Mm. So we have this craving yes, and delusion. Oh my God, I don't know if you will, I just want to drink it. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. <laughs> So we, instead of that, we have the solution of, rather than craving, we have compassion. Mm. Rather than delusion, we have wisdom. Mm. And <clears throat> that system that we've made that functions that way is known as a monastery, mm. a spiritual community. Mm. The problem that we should solve mm -hmm. is that while we know how to make that community up to a few hundred people, mm -hmm. we've made this other system based on craving and delusion mm -hmm. that is good at functioning at the level of billions of people. Mm. And so the great challenge of our age mm -hmm. is how do you scale the system mm -hmm. that we know how to bring to a few hundred people mm. up to a few billion people? Mm. Wait, I know how to scale. Yeah, scale. Ah, uh, maybe not that method. No? Okay. <laughs> so, okay, so if that's not the way we scale, how do we scale? <laughs> well, right now we have a huge opportunity because we're bringing forth new technologies and we have systems in place that could be permeated by wisdom and compassion as they scale beyond any system we've ever seen before. So we have a chance now as we build these technologies to build wisdom and compassion into them. While education in the past has been basically about making young people into the kinds of things that you can make factories out of, right now the question is how do you make young people into vessels of wisdom and compassion because these systems which are becoming global in scope it's only those systems that can solve a problem like global warming mm. as long as you're functioning within these game theoretic mm. competitive dynamics you can't solve these problems a global problem can't be solved at the level of even a nation state but these systems are truly global in scope mm. and they can solve these problems if they wish to. So the challenge is entirely in bringing wisdom and compassion into those systems, and that is what a modern educational system has to achieve. How do we do that? We do that by taking the monastic systems of education and making them relevant to these problems. In other words, we take a system of wisdom and compassion of a few dozen to a few hundred people and we bring technology into that so that the technology is built according to those values and that system creates a new kind of global mind mm. that can guide the current mind mm. into a specific experience which is the critical experience for our age mm. and that experience is regret, which mm. is not one that people want to experience. It's right. hard to imagine why regret would be more joyful than hubris. Mm -hmm. right. But in fact, we discover, as an addict does, that the moment you say, I have a problem, at that moment the solution begins, and the difficulties that you experience after that moment are better than the apparent happiness oh, you had before that. You are right. Yes. In the same way our society goes through that process, realizes we were making a mistake, we shouldn't have destroyed the earth. Mm -hmm. And now we admit we have a problem. That realization comes from a spiritual practice.
Yes, it's like realizing that you have a self-destruct button in your car. So that's a mistake. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Don't push it. Don't push it. Yes. <laughs> so what is our first step or what is the next step for us as, as, a, as a race? Well, it would be to take this educational system mm -hmm. that we have in many traditions, but I would suggest most significantly in the Buddhist tradition, mm -hmm. and we modernize it. Mm. In the same way we take modern technologies and bring them into that system, teaching wisdom and compassion, knowing that it's no longer about intelligence. Mm. Intelligence on its own will destroy us, but intelligence guided by wisdom and compassion will save us, will solve all of these problems if the global system wishes to do it. We need a different system. So you take the largest scale such system that we have already created, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you use technology to scale it further. What would be the substantive first step we can take? We would gather together a group of people who wish to do this, which we have done. Mm -hmm. We would offer them the resources to use technology to discover what we would call a signal for practice. That signal for practice would be some way that a large-scale intelligent system could ascertain whether that community is improving their wisdom and compassion. So in the old days, a signal for practice is, is the Zen master with a big stick, right? Yeah. Just exactly. like that. <laughs> so in the old days, in the old days, the thing that, uh, that ascertains the practice of the community is the master. And that's the reason that we are stuck at the level of mm. a few hundred people. How do you bring that to thousands, millions, billions of people? Mm. That's a challenge that no one has solved. Mm -hmm. We have solved other problems. The, f the global financial system mm -hmm. has worked out how to take trust mm -hmm from the village level of a few hundred, yep. in which a barter economy works quite well. The financial system has allowed us to find ways of trusting each other and thereby collaborating yes. globally. Yes. We have, because of that, that system has taken over the world. Mm, correct. We have not found a way to scale wisdom and compassion in that way. And so we should take it step by step. You take it to the maximum level we've achieved, bring in technology that can scale it even a bit more. Mm. Bring in another type of technology that can scale it a bit more. So it's a matter of making a modern monastery mm -hmm. that can become the conscience mm -hmm. of the global system, mm -hmm. even say the global financial system. Mm. Again, the critical moment is mm. when that spiritual system has given enough practice mm to the current system mm. that has brought us to environmental apocalypse mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that that system can admit, I have a problem. Wow. So we haven't even taken the first step. Mm. What do you mean by modernization? So of course, we're going to have to make changes technologically, but that isn't what's most difficult. <clears throat> Many different people, many different organizations are able to make technological innovation. What's much harder is ideological innovation. Mm. An economy may seem as if it's a force in itself, but actually an economy is the thing that holds the relationship between our values and nature. The interface between human values and the natural world is called an economy. The purpose of an economy is to convert nature into what we value. But what do we value? Up until recently, this postmodern view has been, well, values don't have meaning, they're all made up. But I would suggest that values are carefully taught right. by spiritual institutions in order to move a society on a good path. Sometimes they succeed at that, and sometimes they fail at that. I see. So, in other words, we should shift what we value, which is goods and services, to what we value uh, the earth, the environment, life itself. Life that's, itself. That's what you mean. Exactly. Like change what we value. Exactly. And that will reflect in the economy. If we can change what we value, we change the economy. Mm -hmm. If you change the economy, you change the governmental structure. Mm -hmm. If you change the governmental structure, you change 
the entire society. Who's that guy? Huh? No. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing. <laughs> so, uh, show you what can we and the audience, what can we do for you? The most important thing that we need right now are individuals who can work together in this ideological design. And that means that we need people who wish to get enlightened. Mm who are willing to let go of everything. Mm. It's not the case that all values are made up. When you let go of everything, right value remains. We call this Samyak Sankalpa, Samma Sankapa mm -hmm. in Buddhism, mm -hmm. which is sometimes translated as right aspiration mm -hmm. or right thought. Or right intention. Or right intention. Mm -hmm. That motivates us. Yes when we've let go of all of the baggage that mm -hmm. we've picked up over, well, at least the decades, but maybe the lifetimes. Yes. We let go of all of that and that remains. People who are willing to do that and then collaborate together to create values that can be taught to yes. the whole society globally. Yes. Bringing various factions of the global population together. Mm -hmm. That small group of people mm -hmm. is both the most powerful mm. and must be the most courageous mm -hmm. group of people in the world. Right. And so to find those people, right. bring them to us mm -hmm. so that we can walk this path together, mm -hmm. that would be most helpful. So I remember the Buddha uh, teaching that right intention means three things. Then uh, renunciation, which is letting go, uh, harmlessness, and goodwill, which is kindness. So we're looking for people like that. Exactly. So if you are one of, if you have these qualities, or if you aspire to these qualities, call him, he needs you. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for yeah. being here. Thank you. I go like, whoa. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.